Have you got an ANET A8 3D printer? You're wondering what to print next? Or would you have your main board in a complete mess and jumble of wires? Well, stick around, I'll show you something that just might help you out. Hi guys, Ben at Carbo Creations. A lot of you have already seen my uh, electronics case for the ANET A8 and a lot of you have downloaded it, printed it and I can't thank you enough for the support it's gotten. It's one of the first things I designed uh, for a 3D printer and I'm just amazed at the response it's got. So over the last couple of weeks I've read some of the comments and suggestions of what might make this box better. And so I've spent some time redesigning it and today I'd like to introduce you to the Mark II electronics box. Um, so in this video I'm just going to go through some of the differences between the two. Uh, I've had some people ask about the offsets especially for the MOSFETs so I'll go through uh, what they are as well. So I'm going to install the Mark II on my printer today. You'll be able to see me run all the wires in, uh, terminate everything and I might give you some ideas on how to get the cables in there as well. But first things first, let's look at some of the offsets and what the differences are between the Mark II uh, new case and the original case as well. The main difference between these two cases is that you no longer need screws to attach the lid to the case. I've managed to design in a simple push clip feature so you'll be able to take the lid off at any time you want to access the parts or if you need to get to the reset button as well. This case is physically bigger than the Mark 1 and I've also tried to create some more distance between the MOSFETs and the main board. The horizontal offsets for the MOSFET are 42.5mm and the vertical offsets are 52.5mm. This is one of the most common MOSFET sizes out there, um, however they do differ from model to model. I've redone the fan covers and the 120mm uh, to 80mm reducer as well. The advantage with the 120 to 80 mil reducer is I've put these little clips on instead of screws. So if you do use this piece, you should be able just to push it into the lid. The main advantage of these little clips is you can just clip it straight to the lid. You don't have to worry about the nuts and bolts of putting it together and having something else that could possibly come loose. I've added a small one and a half mil offset on the fans just to give some more breathing space between the actual cover and the fan itself. Now the reducer and the fan covers uh, obviously don't need supports for printing. The case also didn't require any supports for printing. However, the lid did require some supports just for a couple of the overhangs that exist on the lid itself. I printed this case using PLA and I sliced it with Cura. The layer height is 0.2 of a mil. The initial layer speed was down to 15 millisecond. Uh, the rest of the normal speed was at 70 millisecond. As I said, no, no supports, a four mil brim and the remainder of the settings I used you can see here on the right hand side. All up it took 16 hours to print the parts, the longest being the uh, main body of the case at around the 12 hour mark. So now with all the nitty gritty detail out of the way, let's get this thing all wired up. So there you go guys, that's the Mark II case. I've got the files up now on Thingiverse, I've got the links below so you can go download them if you want. But let me know what you think, do you like the Mark I case or do you like the Mark II case better? Are there some things that you'd like to see a bit different, maybe I can work on for Mark III? But anyway, 
that's it for me for now. So don't forget to click the like and subscribe down below. And you can follow me on all my social media accounts at Carbo Creations. Until next time, see you later.